So we took the time to take a look at the graphs of exponential growth functions, but what, are, what do the graphs of exponential decay functions look like? Well, let's have a look. So let's, let's just take an example of one. We'll do a table of values and have a look at the graph. Let's just say we've got y is equal to uh, 1000 multiplied by 0 0.5 to the power of x. Now you notice the difference here is the value of b here is less than 1. When it's less than 1, obviously uh, we're only interested in b when it's greater than 0. We're looking at an exponential decay here when that b value is between 0 and 1. So let's create a table of values here and have a look at what this graph actually looks like. So for our input of x, we're looking at an output of 1000 multiplied by 0 0.5 to the power of x. And we'll go from 0 through to 5, like that. So if we put input 0 here, we'll have 1000 multiplied by 0 0.5 to the power of 0, which will be just that 1000. And what we're actually going to be doing here is we're going to be multiplying by 0 0.5 every single time. So when we go to put this 1 in, we'll end up with 500. The value of 2 will end up with 250. The value of 3 will end up with 125. The value of 4 will end up with 62.5. And the value of 5 will be 31.25. So let's go ahead now and put these onto a graph. All right, so after zero, it was f at 1,000. At one, it was at 500. At two, it was at 250. At three, it was at 125, about there. At four, it was at 62.5, so about there. And at 5, it was at 32.5, so about there. So if we're actually looking at the shape of this graph, it seems to be getting smaller and smaller and smaller, but getting really, really close to this x-axis without actually touching it. So if I was to draw me a line of best fit, what we can see here is it starts really, really steep and it cuts through the y-axis at the value of a as it did last time. But the graph itself, as we move along, is flattening out closer and closer to this x-axis. And it's going to have a horizontal asymptote at the x-axis. So when we're looking at exponential decay functions, all exponential decay functions have this kind of shape. 